joining us right now is uh, Dr. Perry Fleischer, who is uh, Steve's, Steve Grant, our co-host here on Friday's uh, doctor, actually. Cardiologist, yes. Cardiologist. Good morning, Pat. So, how are you doing? I'm good. Is it, the sun shining? It looks like it is. The sun is intensely bright outside. <laughs> the, For a uh, change. I, I haven't heard any updates, Steve. Have you heard any updates on the weather? They were talking uh, sunny weather all week. Yes. It's only 48 degrees, but it's going to gradually warm up day by day by day. It's a nice so fall. So they say. It's a nice fall day. It's a nice fall day. Yeah, the trees is. are starting to change color, and uh, yeah, it's bright it's, and sunny. And it's pretty out there. I don't I'd think anybody can be real unhappy about this weather. Oh, we'll take it then. We'll take it. Unless they're still pining for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, uh, Doc, uh, about a year ago, mm -hmm. um, Steve became your patient. I, I, he was, two years ago. Has it been two years? Can you believe it? I was going to mention that on October 17th, uh, nine days from today, will be my two year anniversary. Because you were it's working two every years. Friday, you would come in. I never noticed anything wrong with you. I didn't feel anything wrong. And um, your wife had told me when you were admitted uh, that you were experiencing tiredness when you were mowing. Yes. And that never happened before. Never. So what happened? And the pain shot across the top of my uh, shoulder. So I finally, well, I didn't act, actually I didn't act on it immediately and I probably should have. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of lucky in a sense. I really never had a, an attack, but uh, I, I kept an eye on it. And uh, the first uh, symptoms I had were walking back from a football game. Actually, that's when I really felt it, just really tired. And, but I didn't have shortness of breath. No intense pain in the chest area, but just this pain across the top of my shoulders. So I got home and I rested and it went away. So I was going to definitely keep an eye on it. And nothing happened the next week. It was, it was still something not right, I thought, but it wasn't as bad next week. And then I started mowing the grass, maybe week two or three. And that's when I felt that same pain. And then one time, that was in the front, and then in the the backyard, I think I had to stop four times. I said, well, it's time to act on this. There's there's something wrong. So I did he, go to the emergency room. He waited room. quite a while. Yeah, he did. Up, about three weeks. He did. So he I, I went to, to uh, ACMC and went to the emergency room. Uh, Doc, what was that? I'm sorry, Doc. I said, fortunately, Steve had, had uh, uh, kind of prolonged warning symptoms, and yeah. uh, uh, not everybody's that fortunate. So Really? Uh, I really was fortunate, uh, looking back. So how did now. you end up with Dr. Flesher, though? He was, I think you were on call that day, call. you were available. Mm -hmm. It was luck of the draw, actually. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be more pleased. Dr. Mm -hmm. Flesher is Thank an you. excellent cardiologist. I couldn't be more pleased. I have a lot of questions. I'm, I'm full of questions. He answers them in a way that Rita, my wife, and I can understand them. And he's been, uh, he's been there every step of the way. So he was assigned to me, and uh, we, d we went through the heart cath. Yes, we did. And that's when it, it showed, a major blockage right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so the next, so that fr so I was there a couple days at ACMC, and the fr that then that Friday, I was instead of going to a football game, I was being taken by an ambulance to <laughs> the Cleveland Clinic. Yeah. What, what did you but, do then? I mean, when you saw that this is this is got a blockage. Uh, well, you know, like so many patients, Steve had appropriate concerns when he came in, but uh, whether uh, you know, as a human nature, everybody prefers to uh, to hope that they're they're wrong. They they've come to the emergency room, they've come for health care. They've got this feeling in the back of their mind that that this could be heart, but they're hoping that the first thing the doctor says is uh, pat him on the shoulder and say, "Well, uh, yeah, I'm glad you came, but this is a false alarm." But in Steve's mm -hmm. case, he uh, he told me symptoms that that really worried me. And mm -hmm. uh, we brought him in the hospital uh, and started some medication to uh, uh, stabilize the situation. Uh, and of course, at rest in the hospital with medication, um, Steve wasn't having any symptoms, but we knew that uh, uh, that we had a problem. So we we went to the heart catheterization laboratory, and I, I did the which the you do there at ACMC, which we do mm -hmm. there at ACMC, and uh, found uh, the blockage in in his heart. And um, uh, with that, we knew we were on the right track. And I felt that the the blockage was severe enough that medicine alone was only going to be a temporary solution. Or a stent. Or a stent. Because, yeah, we discussed the options. We did. And, and uh, But either way, stent or, uh, or open heart surgery, uh, uh, I felt that, that something needed to be done while he was still in the hospital. So we, I made arrangements with my, my colleagues at the main campus in, in Cleveland, at the Cleveland Clinic, and uh, we, we transferred him there for the uh, uh, definitive treatment. By ambulance? By ambulance. Mm -hmm. 
by ambulance. He was still in the hospital. I didn't feel the situation was uh, uh, sufficiently stable to let him go home and make an appointment and drive out there himself. I, I felt it needed to be dealt with okay. right at that point in time, and so we arranged for the transfer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was Friday and the surgery was on a Monday. I think if it would have been an emergency, they would have operated that weekend. But uh, oh, absolutely. But, but I was stabilized and everything was uh, all the results absolutely. were okay. So they waited till Monday, and the doctor did they, did they action? Did they have to cut you? Oh yeah, yep, sure. Steve had the type of blockage that was borderline for uh, for placing a stent, and the determination that we use for that is based upon. Uh, very technical details of, of what the narrowing looks like, where it is, how many blood vessels are involved, uh, so to speak, the geometry of it. And uh, while we can put a stent in just about anywhere in, in the arteries, we like to look at the outcomes too. And, and we know that in some areas the, the stent's not going to produce a, a, a benefit that's quite as good or perhaps quite as permanent as, as uh, bypass surgery is. Uh, or the procedure is going to run the risk of, of not having a, a good outcome on an acute basis. So, mm -hmm. uh, all in all, uh, it was felt that uh, of the options, the, uh, the the bypass surgery was the best option for Steve. I had read somewhere, Doc, that uh, the overuse of stents is not good. Is that the overuse of anything in medicine is not good? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, stents became very popular because people, including physicians, I'm not just saying the lay public, I think at some point uh, we're hoping that this was the promise of the, 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 the true replacement for, for bypass surgery. Nobody likes to have an operation and if you can have something that uh, essentially is a, a procedure that takes uh, uh, an hour, sometimes a little bit more than that, uh, and uh, there's no anesthetic recovery, there's no healing recovery, it's a matter of uh, 24 hours and patients can leave the hospital. Uh, and that this, if, if this has the the uh, the promise of of somehow replacing bypass surgery, but it it doesn't. Uh, uh, stents are a tool. And how long do they last? Well, the 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 stents that we put in, we hope last forever when we put them in. Unfortunately, there is a certain percentage of them that don't. Uh, they fail as a result of uh, scar tissue building up within the stents and reblocking the artery over a period of time. And that can be fairly quick. Usually if it happens, it's going to happen within the first year after the stent. No kidding. Yeah. So uh, for those people who are um, unfortunate not to uh, have a good outcome on a long-term basis with the stent, uh, another procedure of one type or another becomes necessary in a fairly short period of time. Yeah. But for those, the large majority, in whom we select properly for the stent and place the stent uh, uh, correctly, uh, the stent, if, it, if we get past that first critical year, uh, the stent is a, a very long-lasting, uh, uh, virtually permanent uh, uh, relief for them. Okay. Um, how long were you in the hospital, Steve? I was there, um, I was admitted on Friday. The operation was on a Monday, and I was released on Friday. A week? Yeah. A week. Wow. Well, I was there three days before the actual operation, but I was only there a few I days. I remember after. you didn't come back to work here no. for several weeks because you right. weren't allowed to drive or something, right? Right, for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I recovered there at the hospital very nicely. Uh, and uh, But, you know, it's a process, and then I had to watch myself. And Steve was an excellent candidate for surgery. Kept himself in good shape. He was generally in good health except for the heart problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a... Uh, uh, very straightforward uh, uh, type of bypass with no uh, uh, expected technical difficulties. Right. And so, in fact, the doctor who did the surgery told after the surgery, he told the family, he says it was everything was fine, but it was actually quite boring. Is that what he said? <laughs> yeah, he actually yeah. told Rita it was boring. Meaning, he says, I mean that in a good way. It was just a very routine. Well, you don't smoke that's or what drink you drink or anything. Uh, that's what you want the doctor to tell you. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Sure. Sure. Exactly. He said it was boring. <laughs> no complications. Yeah, the last that, thing yeah. you want the doctor to tell you is that your case was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because uh, our our professional uh, and Interest. academic uh, interests uh, go to the exotic, and the exotic are never good things to have. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Um, I don't think you've used the word interesting on me, you mm -hmm. personally. I don't no. think yet. <laughs> no, we had a, we had a very good, straightforward case with uh, with a very good outcome, and uh, I expect that to be uh, the last that you see the inside of an operating room. Oh, I hope heart. so. <laughs> yeah. Does he have to come back to you every so often? What are we on now? Six month basis yes. usually. And well, actually, it's a year. It's a year now. Every October. Yeah. First, the first, obviously. During the acute the, recovery phase, I saw him several times in right, the office. The first year, yeah. And, this, um, and then make sure that there were no problems with healing, make sure there were no uh, uh, problems with um, uh, his medications, and, and to make sure that we took the steps to do what I just said, was to prevent him from ever having to see the inside of a, an open heart operating room. Uh, and basically, you know, the whether it's a stent or whether it's surgery, we're at that point that's that's uh, the little boy with his finger in the dike. We're plugging the leak. We're, we're fixing the problem at, that occurred already uh, that, that's causing symptoms. But the process that got him there is still going on. The, the surgery or the stent doesn't treat that. And that's, that's uh, smoking, if, if you're a smoker, uh, cholesterol, blood pressure, all of the risk factors that, that we're well, uh, 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 well known to everybody and, and that we, we work on. So we're, we've worked on, on making sure that uh, everything has been brought to an ideal level mm -hmm. uh, for Steve, as we do with all patients, and uh, that should limit his risk of, of uh, this process going on, causing more problems down the road. Steve, you told me uh, a few months ago that you are on medication. Oh yeah, sure. Good. Now, what what medication would he need if he's fixed? Well, the majority of patients that have uh, uh, coronary disease and have either a stent or bypass surgery are going to need uh, medication to lower their cholesterol. And the uh, you know cholesterol is is not necessarily the bad guy by itself, but it's one of the the, the primary players. And People will come in very commonly and say, well, you know, I, was, I had a physical with my, uh, my doctor X number of months ago, and he said my cholesterol was just fine. And by and large, if we're looking at the numbers uh, and, uh, and the recommendations, many people will have a cholesterol that, that can be said is, is just fine. But the moment that we find that they have coronary disease, two things change. Number one, the, the cholesterol isn't just fine because it's playing a role in causing a problem. And uh, obviously, for that individual, whatever their cholesterol was, uh, it, it was not fine, else they wouldn't have the coronary disease. So our, our tolerance for cholesterol drops once we know somebody has, uh, has a coronary problem. And we also know that the lower we push the cholesterol in patients with coronary disease, the less coronary disease they're likely to get down the road. So regardless of how good the numbers look, we try to make them look better. And so... Uh, while it can be done with diet, it's been very well shown that the medications that we typically use, uh, usually the statins for those people that tolerate it, <coughs> pardon me, are, um, are used in almost every one of our patients with, uh, with a coronary problem uh, to limit further coronary problems. So statins play a big role in that. Okay. okay. And then uh, a daily baby aspirin, one right. milligram. Small dosage aspirin. Uh, which uh, my wife takes that. Mm -hmm. is just general insurance against uh, future heart attacks even if uh, we don't have severe blockage mm -hmm. that occurs mm -hmm. clotting uh, to like uh, prevent, uh, prevent mm -hmm. the microscopic blood clots that start the heart attack process. Morning, you're on the air. Morning, Pat. Hi. Steve. Morning, Dr. Hi. Flesher. Good this morning. <laughs> Maisie McFadden, you probably know me by Gloria. Okay. <laughs> My husband and I have been your, your patients for the last couple of years. Yes. And um, I just want to tell everybody, if they're looking for a good cardiologist, they should come to you. I've had many over the years, and you have a great bedside manner. You care about your people, and you do a thorough workup. Thank you. I appreciate your saying that. I echo that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, you guys have a good day. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard a lot of good comments about you, Doc. Thank you. And uh, my neighbors, one of them, uh, mentioned that to me the other, oh, last year it was. Um, we have to step aside for a second, and uh, we'll be back with Dr. Fletcher. If you have any questions, give us a call, 593-7181, and then I'll take this before we go. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. Um, there's, a re there's relatively uh, two new tests that are supposed to be more um, precise for cholesterol. They're called a VAP and an LPP, 
and wondered if the doctor has heard of these and does he know anything about them? Okay. Thanks. Yeah, a very good question. There are uh, several, <laughs> familiar with those two uh, uh, tests, there are several other tests that we use uh, for cholesterol profiles. We usually start with the basic cholesterol profile that, that uh, uh, patients are most familiar with and uh, their family doctors and primary doctors do them, uh, which divide the cholesterol into some of its uh, major component parts and look at those. And obviously if there's a problem there, then uh, we're going to address those problems. We do have patients, and I think where this test is, these tests are best used, we do have many patients who uh, in whom we, we obtain the, the standard cholesterol profile and it looks pretty darn good. Uh, the cholesterol numbers are, are actually excellent and yet the person has a coronary problem and in those we'll move on and do what we call advanced lipid profiles and looking at uh, some of the other subcomponents in, including uh, uh, LPA and uh, LDL particle size and uh, a lot of other uh, uh, subunit tests that are much less common and uh, very often then we'll find uh, the, the answers as to what the, uh, the, the cause of the coronary disease is and be able to address that with, uh, with appropriate diet and medication. So yes, I, I am familiar with those tests. We do them uh, very often, but these start to get into the more specific uh, and they're not uh, terribly useful for screening uh, the general population because uh, the majority of people that have problems with uh, uh, coronary disease will be found to have uh, have problems with their, their full cholesterol profile. So we get that under control first. You got a question, Steve? Well, one of the other medications that I take is a beta blocker. And uh, doctor, would you explain what a beta blocker is and why sure. I'm taking it? Very often in, in heart patients, we use beta blockers, especially uh, in patients who have had, if they've had a heart attack uh, somewhere along the way. Uh, in others, because of uh, blood pressure or, or heart rate concerns, beta blockers, are a, um, a very, uh, I shouldn't say very old, but, but long-term uh, uh, friends of ours with it, that we've used for, uh, for many years. Uh, the first of the beta blockers uh, in this country, I believe, uh, was uh, uh, released somewhere in the 1970s. So they, these, these are not new drugs, although there are newer mm -hmm. forms of them, uh, and there are many of them uh, available in this country. And we use them very, very commonly because uh, they were the first class of medicines that was truly shown to prevent heart attacks, especially in survivors of, of uh, uh, prior heart attacks. And so they're, they're used very, very commonly. And uh, as uh, Steve experienced uh, with, with some of them, some of these will have uh, side effects that many patients don't find uh, uh, tolerable. In, in uh, this particular case, uh, we're talking about some personality changes mm -hmm. associated with them. Uh, they can uh, make people feel depressed or angry or irritable. And very often that means uh, a change in dosage or a change in the type of beta blocker that we're using. In some individuals, it means that we can't use beta blockers at all. Uh, what, what, what happens, Steve? I mean, I remember you vaguely telling me after you came back, I'm uh, having, uh, having a little problem with mood swings or something. Yeah, and uh, I thought, you know, I thought, well, before I had the surgery, they, you can watch the tape, or, and there's a lot of material and stuff, and, and they address the psychological ramifications. Of course, it said everybody's different. You may experience depressions. Some may be worse than others. If that's the case, you know, consult some a specialist on yeah. this. But th there are definitely changes. And um, one of the changes, and I brought this up to Dr. Fleischer uh, last week because it had gone on too much. Yeah, I just became negative and stuff like that. And, really? was, and I had no filter. I had very, very little filter anyways because of my personality, but the filter was gone. You know, there just wasn't any filter at all. I just, you know. so he kind of knew right away, he kind of knew right away that uh, one of the, the beta blocker that I was taking did have some side effects like that. Was Would the surgery itself do that? It, it, it tends to, uh, it, my experience, and I, I have to say it, I can't recall ever reading anything in the literature about it, but uh, for the, uh, the middle recovery, weeks five, six, seven, and eight after uh, open heart surgery, I tend to see patients uh, become a little bit blue, a little depressed, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little weepy, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, whether this is a, a combination of um, feeling like they're not improving as fast as they'd like to, uh, or, or feeling sorry or for themselves, maybe. perhaps 
uh, it's, it's hard to say. It, it tends to be mild, it tends to be self-limited, it rarely needs to be dealt with with, uh, with medication or with uh, uh, psychoanalysis uh, or, or other treatments, and tends to reach its resolution by about the ninth week. And it's in the middle of that that we, we often get patients involved in cardiac rehab. Uh, and, and so they go, they, they meet other people that are in the same situation that they are in various uh -huh. stages. Uh -huh. and, uh, and that's one of the, uh, aside from the physical conditioning and healing, uh, I think that's one of the major benefits to cardiac rehab. It's, uh, uh, it's good uh, uh, psychotherapy without drugs. The social mm -hmm. aspect, uh, that's very true. Mm -hmm. And everything that Dr. Fleischer said, uh, I experienced. You know, nothing so extreme. He, so he changed your beta blocker yeah. Yeah. to another one, right. and that you got along with that. I just started it. Oh, you, you, and you've been going, just, have you been going through this uh, short filter, whatever the heck you call it, for two years? <laughs> well, I wonder just, what's been just, wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody's saying that's why I told him not to come back for a year. <laughs> One of my friends said, "So, so that's the excuse." <laughs> now we know why you were acting like that. But uh, no, it, but the beta blocker I'm taking now is a two a day, uh -huh. and. Uh, it's not time released. I think you told me. Correct. It's not. And but it, it still works effectively and maybe even better. There's so. a there's a if I recall there's a time release version of it that you can take once a day. Mm -hmm. But uh, the the time release version is not generic and is considerably more expensive and, and has no medical advantage as long as okay. uh, uh, people are taking it twice a day faithfully. Okay. Good morning. You're on the air. Hi. This is Doug. Uh, Dr. Fletcher takes good care of my wife Debbie. She she has a defibrillator pacemaker. She uh, Dr. Fletcher. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I guess his wife Debbie had a defibrillator. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but doctor wants to see me. Normally, I'd come back next October, but he, because I'm, I have switched this medication, this beta blocker, that you want to see me in December. Correct. Just to make sure. Just to see how we're the doing. Filters <laughs> yeah. The filters back. <laughs> or something. Uh, that's because I wasn't counting on seeing you today. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we can take care of that after that. <laughs> yeah, out in the parking lot. <laughs> True. Hi, you're on the air. Then turn down your, your television. Call back. Turn down, please turn down your televisions and radios because that feedback is absolutely annoying. Um, Steve might not be able to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> not until this medicine. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Five nine three seven one eight was our number here. Um, Doc, uh, and you can call in about uh, about this uh, uh, particular problem out there. Uh, but before we do that, before we go into the next phone call, you have a couple doctors you want to mention. Yes, we do. Um, we're expanding the cardiology practice. Um, at, at, uh, at Ashtabula and we have one doctor who has started with us, actually th a total of three now. Um, uh, we have uh, Dr. Carlos Hubbard coming out uh, from the main campus and seeing patients uh, on a uh, um, um, once a week basis at, at present and uh, in hopefully next month in November uh, as the schedule goes, uh, Dr. Adriano Rosario will be joining us full time. Uh, Dr. Rosario is uh, trained in cardiology at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, she is um, currently actually in a practice in Maine, mm -hmm. but uh, wants to come back to the Cleveland Clinic. And uh, so she'll be joining our practice, uh, which of course is Ashtabula and Maine campus for, mm -hmm. for all of us, because mm -hmm. all of us uh, uh, work in, uh, in Cleveland as well, although our office is staffed full-time in Ashtabula. And uh, Dr. Rosario brings, uh, I think, a very, very important new facet to the practice because she is, uh, while trained as a, uh, as a cardiologist, she is further trained as a specialist in congestive heart failure. Okay. So uh, I think that's going to bring a very, very important and uh, uh, welcome piece to, uh, to the community. Um, you also, your, your uh, other doctor that's been with you there, Dr. Stevens, Dr. Stevens has been on the show. Yes. Was scheduled, I think, to be here a few weeks ago, but got tied up and couldn't make it in. Um, also a very good uh, Doctor, Superb. yeah, yeah. Um, now, if people want to make an appointment or if they have any concerns and they would like to talk to your staff, um, Monday through Friday, or Monday through Friday, regular business hours, and uh, uh, the number is four four zero nine nine four seven six two two. 
Uh, that's the direct line to our office. That answers 24-7, obviously, for our patients for emergencies. Uh, we have an answering service for, uh, for after hours, uh, although um, uh, if they're looking for an appointment uh, or um, uh, further advice, it'd be better off calling Monday through Friday sure. for that. But um, uh, we're, and we're on staff at the hospital, and uh, we, we provide service uh, on a 24-7 basis, uh, so that uh, for those uh, who hopefully <coughs> don't get into the situation, but obviously we know that they do of uh, becoming acutely ill and if they uh, uh, have to come to the emergency room uh, and uh, they can certainly ask for us and we're available. Excellent. Excellent. That number again was? 440-994-7622. Uh, That's strictly for the cardio? cardio. That is direct line to our office. Because it never fails. So after you walk out the door, they'll ask me what the number was. And sure. I, I kind of put a better marker down. Um, and you know, we um, uh, talking about new doctors. We also have uh, Dr. Mohammed Khan who comes to our office once a month from the main campus. Dr. Khan, as you mentioned, defibrillators mm -hmm. uh, earlier. Um, Dr. Khan is a uh, cardiologist who's a, a specialist in electrophysiology, so uh, rhythm abnormalities. Uh, pacemakers, defibrillators, and um, so he provides us with uh, uh, further specialty consultation, uh, even for our own mm -hmm. patients that mm -hmm. uh, we ask him to see for uh, rhythm disturbances, and if defibrillators are necessary, he, he puts them in for us. Excellent. Hi. Call back. Uh, we'll take your call if you want to call back real quick, 593, what's the number, Steve? 593 <laughs> It's been a long morning. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air. Hello, this is Bonita. Hi, Bonita. Um, and that was me. I was turning the... <laughs> <laughs> I had it upside down. I was turning you up instead of down. Oh, I did that last <laughs> night. I understand. This is Bonnie D. Kaiser? Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. Good morning, I, Bonnie. I wanted to ask the doctor if he still does angioplastic. Well, I did angioplasty for uh, uh, the better part of uh, 20 years. And uh, uh, I still do heart catheterizations, but I, uh, over the course of time, uh, I've decided to uh, uh, leave the angioplasties now to the younger doctors. <laughs> well, I had one done in 94, and I'm still fine, but I grow scar tissue, so I don't want a stint. Mm -hmm. So would that be my better choice? About 20 years ago, uh, when did you say you had it done? In 94. In 1994, so almost 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, 20 years ago, uh, stents were in their infancy, and if um, uh, for those people who have uh, avid uh, scar tissue growth, there uh, may be other solutions and some new technology that's, uh, that's available, including uh, a stent that uh, we're um, actually not calling a stent, we're now calling it a scaffold. Uh, that uh, uh, we're using uh, at, at main campus in, in Cleveland, at the Cleveland Clinic, that's biodegradable. That is, it, uh, it gets put in, it does its job to hold the vessel open uh, after it's deployed, but after a period of time it actually completely dissolves and uh, there's no stent left behind. So uh, that's in its, uh, its infancy, and so for people like yourself, uh, we, we may have some new technology that can help you if that becomes a problem down the road. Well, I had knee surgery and it's just full of scar tissue. Mm -hmm. So I have a stiff leg. Mm -hmm. So I would be afraid of a stent. <laughs> As I said, there's some new. Uh, okay, thank you. There may be some new things that would be beneficial to you. Okay, okay. thank you. Thanks, Bonita. Uh huh. All right. Um, how long have you been a doctor now? Thirty years. Uh, gotta go a little further than really? that. Really? <laughs> you had to see a lot of technical oh, yeah. changes, huh? I mean, a 30, lot. Thirty-five years. Thirty-five years. Yeah. So in 35 years, like now, you're telling us about new things. I are, can't even remember how we practiced cardiology 35 years ago. Is that right? It's so different now than it was when I started. Isn't that amazing? Just uh, the changes are, are astounding and good ones too. Yeah, yeah. I know this last August was my 45th year in the newspaper business and, uh, and I can't remember how we started out and how we did it because we went to computer in the sure. 80s and right. everything was completely turned around, you know. You put a newspaper out on one of these computers now, uh, which you couldn't do before. So oh, the it's, technology is the amazing. Technology is amazing. 
<clears throat> um, interesting stuff, Doc. Um, anything else going on? Well, the only other thing I wanted to mention is that, uh, I don't know if we can see this. Can yeah, you zoom in? Hey, Matt, can you, zoom, can you take a shot of this? There, there we are. This is our, our uh, Cardiac Catheterization Laboratory Outcomes uh, publication. Uh, this uh, came out a couple of months ago. It is available uh, to anybody who'd like to see a copy of it at, uh, at Aspula County Medical Center. Uh, the Cleveland Clinic uh, is, uh, has published its outcomes data for all of its uh, various different services for many years now. Okay. And uh, our heart catheterization laboratory is uh, uh, Ashville County Medical Center and Cleveland Clinic facility. We uh, are, are quite proud of, uh, of the facility and quite proud of the outcomes that we have. Uh, anybody who wants to look through here will, will see that uh, our outcomes are, are, are superb with, uh, um, and very much in line with uh, our main campus and national standings. And those so are available at the... At these the are available at the hospital. Uh, this is part of the future of medicine. Uh, we've been doing it at Cleveland Clinic for, for so many years that we consider it the present, but uh, if you listen to what the, some of the experts are saying, some of the, the other the talk shows about uh, the future of medicine uh, and it is going to be, uh, as one of the uh, uh, catchwords is pay for performance, uh, we're not going to be um, rewarded for how much medicine we practice, but how good the medicine is that we practice and, and uh, the quality of it. And, and being able to measure our outcomes and publish them proudly and say these are the best outcomes that uh, uh, th that exist, and, and we're happy to uh, uh, to be able to bring them to the public. Is the degree of uh, uh, openness that that I think we should see across the board in medicine, and what we should see for the future. Well, I'll tell you what. This has been very interesting to me because Steve and I really have not talked a lot about his uh, situation. Um, that was kind of a private thing, but uh, we talked, but not a whole bunch. But I think that there's a perfect outcome that uh, he did well Absolutely. and uh, uh, was back on the show before the end of the year. Uh, yes, I was. That year. I, I snuck in here one day. Yeah, I surprised, surprised me. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, you've, been, you've been well. I know you're walking, and uh, oh, yeah. you did rehab, right? Yes. You did rehab. Then yes. you, now, now you walk uh, quite a way, mm -hmm. ways in the most day. And, uh, you know, when Dr. Fleischer was talking about rehab being a, a, in addition to a physical, you know, benefit, it's mm -hmm. a social benefit, too. And that is so true. Mm -hmm. Because you, I talked to all the people. I had a ball. And uh, I brought in donuts for everyone. No, I didn't. <laughs> 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 you did that. You did that. Your, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, we were all kind of in the same boat. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, different surgeries and everything and uh, and I talked to a lot of people after, also at the Cleveland Clinic. Do you watch I was your, waiting for my surgery. Do you watch your diet? Yeah. More than you did before? Oh, absolutely. Because absolutely. I told your wife, Rita, I go, I, I don't remember him, I go, other than having a, a large hunger, I, I don't remember him having anything bad. And she goes, oh, he'd fall off the wagon for a ham hamburger every now and then and uh, yeah. back before you got sick. Well, and, and, the, and, and ACMC, or uh, Actually, I did my rehab at uh, university, mm -hmm. and one of the things they offered uh, one day was uh, a nutritionist, mm -hmm. and she was very good. And uh, you know, and she says, you know, uh, I talked about cholesterol levels and this and that, and, and fat levels and calories and all that. And and, and the key word was moderation. Mm -hmm. It's not like you have to eliminate everything, right. you know, but just moderation, Absolutely. you know, just yeah. And, and that was the key word. Yeah. So true. So true. Uh, thanks for coming in, Steve. I think that you know, it's putting that putting that out there like you did is uh, commendable because, I mean, it, it shows people that see you in a different light and hear that you explained a lot of stuff here that you didn't have to say. And, I, and well, I and so did that. Dr. Fleischer, and mm -hmm. he mentioned that he was going to be on. And I saw. I jumped at the chance. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Doc, I thought always, it would be beneficial. Always a pleasure having you in. Always a pleasure being here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for doing it. And I'll be back here in two weeks.